Well, one thing's for sure, we're definitely getting closer to cruising. Do you think that we might be cruising in 2020? We'll go through that information about the new protocols in this video up ahead. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the new proposed protocols for cruising by the Healthy Sail Panel and by CLIA. And really, I am going to be going through the nine most important elements and taking you beyond the headlines to what cruising will really look like in practical terms. We'll also answer the question as to how and when cruises will likely resume. And finally, very importantly, if you do have a cruise booked, I'm going to leave you with a question that you're going to want to ask your travel agent or the cruise line, well, whether you have a cruise booked or whether you're thinking of it. So let's get started. Before I do, I did want to mention that if you do like this video or if you find it helpful or enjoyable in any way, please do give the video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel. So let's get started. So I'm going to be going through these protocols now, but I did want to mention that when we first hear them, these protocols might seem a little bit restrictive and the cruise lines actually know this. When they were meeting together as a healthy sail panel, they realized that they really had to strike a balance between health and safety and getting cruising, well, back and also the guest experience. So they really did try to do that. And most of these protocols will actually not remain beyond when the health situation does change. So as uh, treatments are available, as this virus changes and maybe is less of a health concern, of course, as vaccines arrive, we will not have many of these protocols. But the ones that will remain, I can tell you, as I read through 74 different recommendations in the Healthy Sail Panel, and I also read through the information by the Cruise Line Association, which all of the major cruise lines have agreed to, I actually felt even more confident in cruising for the future. And I think we're going to be left with a really phenomenal experience when this is all over. So let's get started on those protocols in particular. The first point has to do with testing and health screening. So every guest, every crew will have to be tested for this virus before getting on the cruise ship. And the type of testing that they are asking for will be a test that is done between 24 hours and five days prior to the cruise starting. And this is really because even though there are so many other recommendations and precautions that will be taken once on the cruise ship, their first priority is making sure this virus really is very unlikely to get on this cruise ship. So a test before you leave home as well, if it is feasible by the time that cruises do resume, there will be a secondary test at the port as well. In addition to this, there will be a health screening, so in a questionnaire form, as well as a touchless temperature check. Now, every day on the cruise, there will also be temperature checking. Should anybody present with a positive result or even for anybody who might have been in contact with anybody who had this virus and they had tested positive within the 14 days before the cruise, they would also be denied boarding. Now, I know you probably have some questions about this, so I will talk about this at the end of the video. Secondly, masks. Yes, face masks will have to be worn on the cruise ship from the point of embarkation at the terminal throughout much of the cruise. Now, when you are in an indoor space, masks will be expected to be worn. The exceptions to this are, of course, when you're in your cruise cabin, but as well when you're in an area and you're eating or you're drinking, so in a restaurant or a lounge. But it does look like, at least at the beginning, we will have to be wearing masks when we are in hallways, in public areas, including theaters. Now, when you don't have to wear a mask is when you are in an outdoor space where there can be social or physical distancing. So, for example, at the pool deck, very important, you will not have to wear a mask. Of course, the chairs will be separated, so there will be things to be done to make sure that we can distance. However, in times where there may not be social distancing or physical distancing being possible, we will have to wear masks. Examples of this might be line dancing next to the pool. It might be at a show that might be outside. So those are some times that we will probably, at least at the beginning, have to wear masks. 
Now, something that I did want to point out is that these are CDC recommendations. And as I read through the Healthy Sale panel recommendations, the CLIA recommendations, it was very clear that the CDC guidelines that is on their website, that this very much was a guiding factor for all of these recommendations. Physical distancing. Now we've heard so much about it that I'm not going to talk about it much. Uh, this was already something very obvious. The ships are going to be sailing at a reduced capacity. They didn't actually give a specific number. And I'm imagining this is because different cruise ships uh, have different areas that they can really manage, but there won't be those crowded areas as we've had on cruises really before. And of course, this isn't something that's going to continue forever, but at least at the beginning. So this just means that we will have tables that are more spread apart in the restaurants. We will have lounge chairs that are more spread apart on the pool deck. So overall, this will probably be one of those positive things that are not really going to stay, but that we will actually probably appreciate just a little bit on a cruise when we do go. Next up, we have shore excursions. And as we know, this is also something that is a little bit controversial because of course, we like to sometimes explore on our own. But for safety, at the beginning, this is something that just has to be done. Cruise lines have to preserve that bubble that they've established when people got on the cruise ship. And as well, for the beginning, even the islands, the destinations have to balance their need for safety, for their own uh, residents, as well, of course, the fact that they do want cruise lines to come back because revenue from tourism is really important. So at the beginning, we will need to book ship-sponsored excursions if we do want to get on the ship. Now, there was a little bit of a talk of recommendations that the cruise lines do offer perhaps some better pricing on these, which I hope will happen because I think that will make things easier for people, for families who are cruising. And what's really very important is that these vendors are vetted, are really verified to make sure that they are following guidelines to make sure that certain things like masks and social distancing and sanitization, that that's all continuing on the excursion. Now, I did want to mention something that does look possible is that we may not need to wear masks on the excursions if we are outside. Now, of course, in a time where we are all close together, we cannot social distance, like for instance, if we were on a shuttle, then we would have to wear masks. But it does look like if we are in an outdoor space, like for instance, on a beach, that we can have space between each other, we would not likely have to wear masks. So this might be something good for those Caribbean itineraries or those Bahamas itineraries early on. Now, this next point, if you are somebody who really worries about what happens if we get back on a cruise and if there is a problem, if somebody does catch this virus, if there's a suspected case, are we going to be stuck on the cruise ship? So very interesting is that cruise lines, when planning their itineraries, one of the things that they are, are doing is, first of all, obviously, they have to have an agreement with the local government. That's a given. But the other thing that they are doing is they have to make sure that they have an agreement with that destination for safe passage for people who might need to be evacuated, even on a small scale or on a larger scale, that people can have safe passage home. And this is really to prevent the kinds of things that were happening when this pandemic first started, where people, where crew and passengers were really stuck on cruise ships. So that will not happen now because they have these partnerships that they are setting up with the destinations. An upgrade to the medical personnel and the medical facilities. Now, I love this one because this is something that in the past on cruises maybe just wasn't the very best. We just accepted that it was what it was and that there was a doctor and a nurse, but really there were minimal medical facilities on a cruise ship. So this is all really going to be changing. And not only will there be more medical personnel, uh, the ratio is going to be higher. That is part of the recommendations, but as well, the doctor that is on board, they'll have to have at least one doctor that really is able to do more intensive therapies. They will have new technologies. And some of this, to give you an example, will be if a passenger needs to see a doctor and they are in their cabin, they may be able to have virtual appointments rather than actually having to make their way down to the medical facility. Something else is that the medical team on board will have access to basically like a partnership with shoreside medical uh, facilities and personnel. And that would be uh, virtual telecommunications, telemedical communications. So really very interesting partnerships and communications and technologies going forward for the medical facilities and the medical team. Now, what happens if somebody does come down with this virus on the cruise ship? Well, there will be isolation areas, quarantine areas, cabins 
on the cruise ship should that occur. Crew safety. Crew safety, of course, is so important. We, of course, really care about the crew. They make our vacations actually happen. So crew safety is very important and is very much a part of these recommendations. Now, not to get too much into the detail, but basically the crew will, of course, be wearing masks, will also be wearing personal protection equipment when that would be deemed necessary. They will have training. And if you are wondering, well, what happens to crew when they get to port? Will they be able to get off? Are they going to be stuck on the cruise ship? So they will be able to get off. There are guidelines that they will have to follow to ensure that they also are keeping within a safe restriction, but they will be able to get off as well. At the beginning, crew are as much as possible going to be housed in single occupancy cabins. So now something very exciting, how and when will cruises resume? Well, the truth is we don't really know that. Can they resume after November 1st? It is actually looking like it might be possible. And I will tell you why. First of all, of course, we know that the CDC has to lift that no sale order. Well, a positive sign is that the CDC actually did sit in with a couple of observers on the Healthy Sail panel, which of course is that panel of experts that was put together by Royal Caribbean Group and Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. And really Carnival and MSC were also part of that as observers, as was CLIA, the Cruise Line Association. So this was very much a partnership of really um, cruise lines getting together and making sure that they are following and recommending um, protocols that will work on a cruise ship in particular. And the CDC was part of this. And as we look through the recommendations, we can see that a lot of the CDC guidelines were actually followed. But how will it happen? Well, what is recommended is a phased in approach. And this would mean that all cruise ships wouldn't be restarting all at the same time, which of course we know probably wouldn't happen anyway. But basically what will happen is at the beginning, there will be a few ships that will be allowed to go and they will have to, of course, um, follow the recommendations. But beyond that, they will start, it's suggested, with trial runs with only the crew so that they can really catch those snags. After that, they will do short cruises to a private island. Personally, I really like that. And if I live near a cruise port, I would definitely be on that. And then after that, they will go to destinations that really they already have those partnerships and that are deemed safe for the cruise passengers. So of course, we have to hear more. And as of the time that I'm filming this, the CDC has not yet lifted the no sell order. But I do think that that's something possible and that we will hear a plan from the major cruise lines soon. Of course, for the very specifics, you'll have to wait for your own cruise line to tell you exactly how things are going to go. And we'll have a follow up video to this to address this. Now, I did mention that I had a question that I think that you're going to want answered and you probably will want to ask this to the cruise line or to the travel agent. And we should hear an answer to this soon, but it was not addressed in the recommendations. And that is what happens if somebody is denied boarding because they do end up testing and having this virus? What happens to somebody who may have been in contact with somebody who had this virus in the 14 days prior to the cruise? So what happens in terms of refunds, in terms of reimbursement? So that is a question I think we just don't have the answer to right now, but I do think that I want to know the answer. You probably want to know the answer. So if you are already booked, you might want to ask this. And if you're not already booked, then definitely make sure that you do ask this question as well. So please let me know what you think. Do you think that we will be cruising soon? Are you happy with the protocols? Will you be waiting until some of these things, well, lessen a little bit? And that's okay too. Let me know please in the comments below what you think. Now, if you did like this video, if you found it helpful or enjoyable, please do give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now I am on Instagram, I am on Facebook at Life All Cruise, and I'd love to connect with you there. Happy future cruising.